Good morning. From a young age, I was always a social butterfly, so making friends was never an issue for me. I was the type of girl to become friends with a new kid or just join in a game with kids I had never met before. So when I decided to join my all-boys middle school football team, I was surprised I couldn't make any friends. Then I realized I couldn't make any friends because I was a girl. And I knew that if I didn't step up and build a friendship with them, then we would have a terrible season. Hi, my name is Raina Marthy, and today I'll be talking to you about the three steps to building a successful relationship in a hostile environment. Some of you may be thinking, a girl playing football? Are you crazy? Well, I like to think I wasn't, but here's some background information. My obsession with football started from my dad. My dad loves football, and me being the daddy's girl that I was, I would always watch with him even though I had no idea what was going on and I only wanted the team with the better color jersey to win. But as I started getting older, I started understanding the ways of the game more, like how plays worked, how fouls worked, the best teams and players, and many more. And soon I found myself not only watching football, but also playing, whether it be catch in the backyard with my dad or at touch football at recess with my friends. So then when I joined middle school, I found out that my middle school had a football team and I immediately knew I wanted to join. And when I did, I was ecstatic. I couldn't wait for the first games and practices, but my excitement was quickly shut down when I realized many of the boys were treating me differently. For example, some of them wouldn't tackle me while others weren't excited when being paired with me during drills. I realized that they didn't like me because I was a girl and I knew that I had to build a friendship with them. So I created three steps to help me do just that. Step one, finding your similarities. Finding out what you have in common can show that y'all might, not, might not have been as different as y'all thought you were. Studies have shown that the more you know and have in common with someone, the more you can trust and rely on them. When I did this with my team, I found out that they all liked watching WWE. For those of you who don't know, WWE is a wrestling show. I had never heard about WWE before, so I decided to try watching it, and now it's one of my favorite shows to watch in my free time. Some of you may be asking, well, what if I don't like anything that they like? Well, maybe you should try it. Trying new things is never a bad thing, and you may even find that you like it. Some of these things that can be more personal can be their favorite band, their favorite artist, things they like to do on the weekend, and many more. Since I learned more about WWE, I was able to talk about it more, and I could use it as a great bonding experience that really helped in the long run. Moving on to step two, staying consistent when interacting with them. Although finding your similarities gives a good foundation, that would have all been a waste of time if you don't keep on talking to them. Think about it like this. If you were to become friends with someone and then one day they suddenly stop talking to you, you would think that you're, they're not your friend anymore. And then if they were to come talk to you again, it would be really awkward, right? Sometimes it takes people a little bit longer to, to make a friendship and that's okay. It took me almost three weeks of consistently talking with my team to build that friendship. And again, that's okay. But what's not okay is to give up. Just because you're not making any, just because you're not getting a reaction doesn't mean you're not making any progress. Again, everyone reacts differently to every situation and it's okay. Some of the ways of keeping a conversation is by using step one, talking about your similarities. With me, usually starting off the conversation with WWE, since everyone knew about the show, was the best way to keep the conversation going. And the more you keep on talking with them, the more they'll talk to you. And the more that they talk to you, the more they'll tell you personal things. And studies have shown that the more someone tells you about their personal life, the more they can trust and rely on you. And although this puts you in a really good position, there's still one more thing you have to do, which brings me to my third and final step. Step three, enjoying the time you have with them. It's important to do this to show that you even want to try and make that friendship in the first place. Think about it like this. If you were to be forced to work on a project with someone, that you don't like and they don't like you either, it would be really painful to work on that project, right? Plus the grade you would receive on that project wouldn't be the best because of the lack of communication. So showing that you wanna be there can really help in the long run. Some ways of doing this is by watching the way you talk. If you talk with a depressed, I don't wanna be here tone, then it's gonna rub the, that same energy off onto your person you're trying to become friends with and the experience is not gonna be fun for anyone. Instead, sound excited, sound like you want to be there. This will rub the positive energy off onto the other person so that they'll be excited too. Another thing to watch out for is your body language. Slouching, not keeping eye contact, and frowning when they're talking to you are all negative body language that you should not do. Instead, smile, stand up straight, and keep eye contact when you're talking with them. This will show that you're engaged in the conversation and you're excited to be with them. 
by doing all of these things, you will successfully show that you enjoy being with them and you enjoy spending time with them. With me, it was really difficult to do that since my team was always so negative around me. But I knew that if I gave the same negativity that they were giving me, that I would never be able to build a friendship with them and we would have a terrible season. And eventually, after working super hard, it worked. So eventually, with time and with after completing all these steps, it finally worked. I was finally able to build a relationship with my team. And once I did, our season was great. We all had some pretty amazing moments and I had never had more fun playing football than I have with any of them. I'm so happy that I followed these steps to give me forever lasting friendships and great memories. So next time you're in a situation just like mine, you can use these steps to your advantage. Thank you.